Welcome everybody to the first virtual senior exposition. Uh, can everybody please mute themselves during the presentation and then I'll, uh, we can unmute after the slideshow. Can you see that I have my people boxes open? Okay, so I have to close it. Is that better? Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, go back. Okay, I am ready whenever you guys are ready. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that I saw that. Hi, my name is Angelica Castillo. I'm a senior in the Academy for Medical Science Technology at Bergen County Academies. And my weekly internship for senior year was at Ordell Public School or OPS for short. So I wanted to begin with what is an elementary science lab. Uh, the science lab at OPS was a home of many, many science explorations where students focused on observing the world around them, making predictions, and creatively testing their ideas with an emphasis on creativity. Um, and students would test their ideas through participating in various grade appropriate labs. In the science lab, students very actively learned about and explored science concepts that were previously taught in their classrooms. Some of my favorite science labs were um, in exploring endangered species, which I have a picture of on the top right. This is actually a boot and a heel made from, I think, alligator and crocodile leathers, um, respectively. One of the things that I consistently talk about when talking about my internship is UV color changing beads that I did with the kindergarten class. So when the kindergartners did it, they worked with um, cattails and protecting their protecting their cats with uh, shelters made out of cardboard. I actually linked a video to that project uh, that you can watch if I share this presentation afterwards. But I just thought it was very impressive that Mrs. Keener could think of activities to test different science theories, even at the level of kindergartners, because I for sure did not have any of these insane learning experiences when I was that old. Um, one of my other memorable labs was the Astronaut Training Center, which I believe I have a picture of on the next slide. And the very first class that I did was, I call it Escape Room Science Lab Edition. So we ran a mini escape room for the science lab, and it was just very, very cool. That was my first ever experience in an escape room. I haven't done any since, but I just thought it was very cool that we could adapt all these different puzzles um, for critical thinking from kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade, which is the highest grade that I worked with. So some of my daily responsibilities were setting up and trying new experiments, assisting my mentor, Mrs. Keener, and helping the students stay on task. Um, I would go around asking students questions and answering questions to make sure that they understood what was happening at a basic elementary level of science. Um, during the lab and afterwards in between classes, I would clean up the lab, which would often get messy. Um, and then I would also care for life in the lab, which included mealworms, snails, and plants. I also had various special projects throughout the year that I will talk about. Um, I wouldn't count this as a special project, but we had a guest speaker and she brought her snake, which was pictured in the bottom left. Uh, and we just had snake show and tell and we talked about reptiles for the day. And in the middle right picture is, I think a, croc a crocodile, maybe an alligator skin, but that for me is very cool because it was taller than me and is very interesting. So general requirements for this internship, you have to enjoy working hands-on with students grades K through six. And I emphasize, again, enjoy working hands-on. You cannot just tolerate having students. I didn't know if I was really somebody who could deal with uh, working with little kids all day, but I actually did have a lot of fun and I realized I have a lot more patience than I thought I did. Uh, you have to be adaptable and be a quick learner because a lot of problems will pop up that you could not possibly have expected. Um, you have to have a basic understanding of elementary school science, which I think most people are prepared for. Uh, you have to be willing to make and clean up messy labs. On the right, I have a picture of me handling oobleck and water cornstarch, or oobleck made out of cornstarch and water that got all over the labs, all over the kids' hands. So we had to deal with that. Um, you have to be able to stand for the duration of the school day, which I did not anticipate being as hard as it was, but I spend most of my day sitting in a classroom. So standing for eight hours a day really hurt my feet every week and I didn't even get used to it by the time that I was done going to internship. Um, you have to be comfortable handling bugs and other slimy things. I know Mrs. Keener asked me this in my interview, 
but I didn't realize I would actually have to be handling bugs and slimy things. Um, so I definitely got used to that. Uh, you have to have access to transportation um, to and from OPS. For me, that was driving. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to parallel park because that's you have to park on a street. But I learned so that I could go to internship. It was a little bit scary, but you live and you learn. Uh, you have to be able to take pictures and videos on Mrs. Keener's iPad, which is relatively straightforward. And you have to be able to make and edit videos with iMovie. So I added a little bit of a side note. This type of internship would be great for somebody who wants to work hands-on every internship week. Um, I did not want to do paperwork all day like some of my other classmates. And I definitely didn't want to shadow some physician because I know I'll be doing that inevitably. So I wanted to work with people and kids are awesome. And they make you laugh in ways that you didn't think were possible. So my typical day, I outlined a little bit of what I did. Um, and I've talked about this previously, but I would arrive at OPS and sign in around uh, 8 to 8.35. I would help Mrs. Keener set up for the lab, prep some handouts and printouts um, up until 9 a.m., our first class. And then during the labs, I would help out with lab activities, answer questions, um, help out with presentations, whatever it was fit for me. Then we would have lunch for about an hour and prep for our afternoon classes, do our afternoon labs. And then at the end of the day, we'd stay for about an hour, cleaning up the lab, putting away experiments, trying out new things, or just working in the garden. Uh, throughout the day, I would clean up, definitely during labs. I would reset labs, um, change for different grades. I'd be taking pictures if there was anything notable. And then when I had free time, if I had free time, I would do miscellaneous preparation work. So the transition to remote school was something different with this internship that hasn't had to be experienced by previous years. But in the beginning of our transition to remote school, Mrs. Keener and I brainstormed, uh, found and tested new lab activities that students would likely have um, the access to at home, or access to materials at home. So one of the ones that I really enjoyed was making paper rockets with straw launchers. Uh, I was living with my younger cousin at the time so he even enjoyed doing this. It was very fun to just stand outside and blow um, paper rockets at each other. Uh, and then after we made a large list of activities, we started to sort out activities by grade level and we weeded out the ones that really wouldn't be appropriate or were too simple. And we tried to find things that would be interesting as if you were still going to the science lab. Um, and then after we had picked out a few activities specifically for each grade, we matched each to their respective curriculum. And if we didn't find that it was really a good fit, we kind of put it on the back burner and saw if there was any place later. Uh, and then one of the other things that I had to do was create hint pages and test online puzzles that Mrs. Keener had found, which was very fun. I did it with my best friend um, on Wednesdays and we would sometimes get stumped at puzzles that were meant for third graders. So it was, it was an eye opener. Um, and recently I helped Mrs. Keener edit Google presentations uh, with embedded audio to create read-along books and read-along book um, videos. And before I even did this, I helped Mrs. Keener edit her puppet show video and I helped her film and edit the kindergarten welcome song, which I linked um, in a later slide because that was one of my favorite things about the science lab. I just, I really liked the kindergartners. So special projects, um, I have two sides of these. So my favorite special project was the Space Foundation Lunch Bites. So these were little mini lessons free for teachers. And we filmed this specific lunch bite on astronaut or on our astronaut training day um, lesson. So we had set up six different stations. And so I, I filmed Mrs. Keener running through the stations as if she were a student. And I helped her film the voiceover for the instructions for these. Um, and then we sent it to the Space Foundation and they later posted it to the teacher's uh, teacher liaison Facebook page. And recently, actually, they shared it to their public website. So many other teachers get to use this resource. Um, Jacob actually helped us film how we made the Lunch Bite video. And that was also published on the website for inspiration for teachers. So that was very awesome. Um, I didn't really expect to have any overarching year-long projects, but this actually turned out to be one of them. And so one of Mrs. Keener's most successful videos was actually this um, dandelion read aloud book. So she had taken screenshots and I just cropped them into a Google slide and we made it into a video. 
So more of my social projects. On the left most is me transporting snails. Um, I had never actually seen snails in real life. I was kind of very amused with them. Uh, in the middle is me teaching at the Ozobot station during robotics day. This was very interesting to me because like I said, my elementary middle school did not really have any sort of hands-on science activities. We only ever did paper handouts. So seeing kids working with robotics and working with iPads and um, augmented reality, virtual reality was very awesome. And I had a picture of this. I don't know if this was the class that I worked with, but we built um, model clay volcanoes and I helped one of the groups build a really cool volcano and everyone copied our volcano design. So that was a fun special project. Um, and that's all I have. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email my personal email because I will not be looking at my school email anymore. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angelica. I'm going to stop the recording now.